Good morning, beloved of God. What a gift and blessing it is to gather here for worship this uh, Sunday. Nancy mentioned something about Sign Up Genius. I'll let her do that at the ministry moment. Um, let's go ahead and prepare ourselves, our hearts, our minds. Uh, take a breath for worship here with this prelude.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we are, clo- we are joined to Christ and clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth a life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word you claim us as beloved children making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Christ Jesus. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak of them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name, a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and for one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has had this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they think of the food they eat as the food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching. With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. 
At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated. Any of our young folks, Lucy, Violet, if you want to come and hang out for a few seconds. How are we today? Good. Hi, Lucy. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> right into it. <laughs> Lucy, what a joy you, uh, you bring to our worship space today. So friends, we hear a story today and next week. So we're going to preview a little bit of next week where there are people who aren't feeling well and they meet Jesus and Jesus heals them. They are whole. And so today I just want to get together and I just want to share that with you and how that for us is a word of hope. A word of hope. That there are times when we won't feel 100%, we won't feel our whole selves, and yet God, <laughs> God is there to remind us that in God we are always whole. And so it, it helps us to, to face a new day and it gives us hope. So I want to invite you to share with one another here somebody that you would like to pray for today. Somebody that might be sick or less than whole. And I have a few if you uh, need a chance to think. <laughs> She's great. Violet, is there anybody that you want to pray for today? Would you share their name with us? Your cat pumpkin? All right, very good. Papa B, all right. So Papa B... Pumpkin, and then I'll add Miss Karen to that, okay? So won't you pray with me? I'll go ahead and offer some words if you want to repeat after me as we learn and grow together. Dear God, thank you for Jesus that shows me your healing love. Be with Papa B, Pumpkin, Miss Karen, and all of those who look for hope, help me share your healing love with my words and actions today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it's good to be together. It's good to share the joy of your laughter and the beauty of your smile as we continue to share this journey together. Yep, go for it. Woo! All right, if you want to get your worship kits from Mr. Ron there, you, and you can continue to learn and grow with those resources while I talk with the big kids a little bit, and we continue our worship together. In the spirit that you share, my friends. Zach, you remember when you were that cute? <laughs> yeah, his Miss Sherry's like, yep. <laughs> oh. In today's gospel story, Jesus begins his ministry with those disciples that he called in the last few stories that we've encountered. Those that he has intentionally called along the way to follow him, to see and experience the way of God's love, to learn and grow from and in the way of God's love, to share and then proclaim the way of God's love in their lives. And in the Gospel of Mark, the first acts that give flesh to the bones of His preaching and teaching, the good news that in Him the kingdom of God has come near, are two acts of healing. They're spread over this week and next, if you're looking for the other one. It wasn't today, but it'll be at the beginning of next week's gospel story. The first is today's story of Jesus teaching with his new disciples in the synagogue. It tells us how they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having 
Some authority. One having authority. The authority of God's Word is known and proclaimed and exemplified in the unclean spirit inhabiting one of the crowd who calls out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Naming God here in the midst of the synagogue. Have you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. That's right. That's right. Uh, the Gospel of Mark really gets things going here with a demon possession scene. It's, it's excellent. The uh, amazing authority of God's Word embodied in Jesus is shown in the act of exorcism. Be silent and come out of Him. I hear echoes of Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Be silent and come out of Him. And the unclean spirit convulsing Him and crying with a loud voice came out of Him. Man, when your goal is to exemplify the power and the authority of Jesus as the living Word of God, is there no better way than the very forces that would bring death and disease? This unclean spirit. Even the unclean spirits obey Him is the astonished response of the whispers of Jesus' growing fame. Even the unclean spirits obey Him. Here, perhaps the old adage, actions speak louder than words, may be helpful for our reflection together. We aren't told what Jesus was teaching in the synagogue that day. We don't have the words recorded that were inspiring awe at their authority, nor inspired the voice of the unclean spirit to speak up in the first place. But in the action of the unclean spirit fleeing Jesus, we clearly see the effective power of Jesus' words to set this person free from the unclean spirit that was weighing them down. Which brings us to the good news of the gospel for us today. The power of God's word of love to set free from what weighs down. This is what our theme today invites us to contemplate. To let the light of Christ heal. Set free from what weighs down. What keeps you from loving and serving as Jesus shows throughout the Gospels. Okay, so rather than asking you to remember the last time you experienced an exorcism from demon possession, how about when you were sick with like a little bug of some kind? I think that's maybe a little easier to call to mind. Now, having a 10 and 7 year old at home, uh, and both Laura and I spending our week in a school setting, we just have to think back a week, if we're lucky. When, when you're sick, though, right? When you're sick with a stomach bug or, or a fever of some sort, you're weighed down. You're held captive to what it is that ails you. I think all of us can relate to that feeling. When the fever breaks or the stomach settles, you're set free from that weight and you can go live your life. This is the healing story that we're going to hear next week when Simeon's, uh, I'm sorry, Simon's mother-in-law is in bed with a fever until Jesus arrives. It's another act of healing, uh, a showing of the power of God's Word to set free from, the, what, from what weighs down. And it may be a little easier for us to relate to. Now, though, in between these two maybe extremes, demon possession and the stomach bug, lies all sorts of things, right? that would weigh someone down from long-term disease and traumatic disabilities to mental illness and addiction, from heartbreak over the devastation of war to concern for the ecological crisis of our earth, from the fear of gun violence in our schools and in our streets to the pressure to have to take a hardened side in the dualistic divisions that seem to be demanded for everything now in our world. Okay, now take a collective breath. I love when I do that because you actually do it. I hear it. That's awesome. 
Because you see, all right, this exercise is not to stress you out. That's not what this is about. But rather, rather to broaden the scope of what it is that, that brings weight to the heart. What brings weight to the spirit. And, the, and, and that would, would stand to benefit from letting the light of Christ heal as it flows from the gospel of God's word out through the lives of the faithful into a world groaning under the weight of so much. God's healing that Jesus offers in our story today is more than, I was sick and now I'm better. It is this, of course, as we see in next week's story, but at its core, it is release and freedom from what weighs you down. To reflect on the question, what weighs you down, allows you to receive in gratitude, as our choir will sing about, the power of God's healing word, even when you don't necessarily feel sick, but yet feel weighed down. Our healing stories today and next week show us the power and the authority of God's word to heal as being free from the weight that would seek to drag you into the abyss of defeat, what you could name death. Understanding the power and authority of God's word to heal in this way of setting free into wholeness instead of simply a cure or a fix for whatever weighs you down illustrates the abundant life that God calls us to in the midst of an imperfect world. I've found in my uh, journey as pastor these, what is it now? What year is it? 2023? 24? Is it 24? It's January still. I get a little bit of a grace period, right? I don't know, 13 years I think it's been or so. Um, is that I, I find reflecting and preaching on healing more and more challenging. More and more challenging. Um, because any given day, you're surrounded by disease, death, sickness, the weight of so much reality of being in relationship with you all. If you could all just stay perfectly healthy all the time, my life would be grand. But that's not our reality, is it? As people, as, as, as people of faith this side of heaven. Uh, and so, uh, I, I pray for miracles. I do. I pray for miracles. I pray for peace. While I myself stand powerless before disease and war. Longing for an end to cancer and killing. I don't give in to the crushing weight of sickness and evil that are in front of me every day. Instead, I have to daily surrender to God, trusting God to heal, and knowing that sometimes that will include my voice and my presence and my energy to serve my neighbor in need in the love of God. So, um, some of my struggle, I think, with the idea of healing alcoholism can provide a helpful example here. As I understand it, you're never cured of alcoholism. All, you always live with it, and when you put in the work, you learn to live in relationship to it, to take its power away, and to live free from it. Always working, every day, to stay sober. It's why the first two steps in the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous is a surrender to, the pow to powerlessness over alcohol and a faith in a greater power than ourselves to set free from the power of alcohol. And so to let the light of Christ heal is to live in the freedom of the gospel that has the power and authority to make all things new to make all things whole and to hold all things together in great love. It's a perspective shifting in, in a lot of ways. And in the face of what weighs you down, we, the, the question for reflection that we take along the journey this week is how might the word of God's love 
free you to persevere into a life of wholeness, set free from the power of evil and death, to abound together in hope, to let the light of Christ flow through you as God's powerful word of healing in this world. Happy contemplation. Now, together with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers 
honor your instruction and model your inclusive ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all of creation, that waterways flow clean and clear, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth. God of grace, receive our prayer. Justice-seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. God of grace, receive our prayers. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who have known rejection, anyone who struggles with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any who suffer. Phil, Alyssa, Matt, Dick, R.C., Kim, Gary and Fran, Dolores, Jackie, Jerry, Silas, Don and Beth, Wendy, Bob, Shannon, Tim, Claudia, David and Diane, Flora, Dale and Edie, Jeff, Julie, and Chris, John and Susan, Judy, Bill and Jim, Robert and Carolyn, and all those we now name in silence or aloud. God of grace, receive our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for Cross of Hope, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, gospel witness, and love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Eternal God, we remember all who have been teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives. We trust that all who have died rest in your loving care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also we share signs of peace with one another. Nancy Lasher, where'd she go? There she is. Beloved of God, please welcome Nancy Lasher for a brief ministry moment here. Very brief. Good morning, everyone. Our camp at Cross of Hope is back in session after the holidays, and we would appreciate some help. If you go to the um, website and look at the meals needed, we have two meals left in this rotation. The meal this week is sandwiches, so that's easy. Just look at what's needed, and if you can click on volunteering to contribute something, that will be great. Next week is fried chicken, and we're going to add some mac and cheese because we have some vegetarians in our group. So if you could do one of those things, contribute some money to buy fried chicken or mac and cheese. Thanks very much.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory both now and forever. Amen. Lord, you gather us together and hold us in and by your Spirit. And so we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, taste and see God's healing love for you. All is now ready. All are welcome. Thank you, this is the body of Christ broken for you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of His body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or spirit and receive now God's blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. O God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, 
peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.